Hello, I'm Ali Schansfeld, Managing Editor of Orthodontic Practice US, a Medmark publication. Welcome to a presentation and question and answer with Dr. Paul Trotter. In our webinar today, we will be discussing the latest generation of technologies that integrate all variables essential for predictable orthodontic success. Before we get started, I'd like to invite viewers to use the question and answer box to ask any questions, and they'll be answered at the end of the session as time permits. Now I'm pleased to introduce our speaker. Dr. Trotter earned his Bachelor of Science degree from Furman University, where he was a member of the varsity men's golf team. He earned a Doctor of Dental Medicine degree from the Medical College of Georgia, followed by a certificate in advanced general dentistry from the University of Mississippi. Dr. Trotter completed his education by earning his specialized orthodontic certification from the Dental College of Georgia at Augusta University, formerly the Medical College of Georgia. Dr. Trotter is honored, is honored to work with his father, providing excellent orthodontic care to their patients. He continues to hone his skills with 40 to 50 hours of education a year regarding the latest in orthodontic procedures and patient care. He is also certified by the American Board of Orthodontics. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Trotter. We now turn the webinar over to you to learn more about today's topic. Great. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Uh, so I'm going to try to touch on um, our workflow across several different areas of our practice, um, because I think the digital workflow is something that practices are scared of when they're considering a conversion to um, digital in, in any different aspect of the practice. So we're going to touch on it across several different areas. But um, first, thank you for the introduction. Uh, a little bit about me, um, you know, most of which you've already touched on, which was great. Uh, I was born and raised in Augusta. Uh, I did got, get my undergrad at Furman University in biology uh, and then dental school back here in Augusta and then an AEGD in Jackson, Mississippi. We love Jackson so much that our son there in the picture, we named him Jackson. Um, and then uh, back to Augusta for orthodontic residency. Uh, and then I was able to join my, my dad's private practice here in Augusta in 2014. Uh, and so I met my wife, Liz, at Furman. And we have Jackson, who's five, and Annie, or sorry, Jackson, who's seven, and Annie, who is five. Um, so uh, there's my dad. He joined orthodontic practice in 1981, started uh, Trotter Orthodontics, and started with one location. And then we opened our second location in 2014. Um, I'm a big Georgia fan and a big Braves fan. And so we haven't had much to cheer about until 2021 when we pulled off uh, the double. And so um, really glad that we finally have something to cheer about with two good teams. And we're hoping uh, the Braves are looking really good this year. So hoping that maybe they can make a run at it again. Being from Augusta, the next, the next natural question is, and, and being a golfer, uh, have you played the Augusta National and can you get me tickets to the Masters or can you get me on Augusta National? Uh, and so, yes, no, and no. Uh, I have played Augusta National. No, I can't get you tickets. And no, I can't get you on. Um, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, uh, we will talk about some orthodontics. So um, this is my team now. Uh, and so you don't notice my dad in there. So we'll talk a little bit about that um, as the webinar goes on. But uh, I do have a little bit of a larger team. So since I joined my dad's practice, uh, the team has tripled and the practice uh, numbers and statistics have tripled. Uh, so we have experienced a lot of growth. And so I'll talk a little bit about how we have handled that growth and what we've done to um, kind of stimulate that growth as well. So um, as I mentioned, we have two offices. So my dad built the one on the top in 1981. And... Um, it has served us really, really well. And uh, then in 2014, uh, I opened or we opened together the Evans office, which um, Evans was a, a really growing area in uh, in the CSRA, which is what we call the greater Augusta area. And, um, you know, as I approached practice, I just realized that the current Augusta office couldn't support two orthodontists. So we needed somewhere else to practice. Uh, and so we added the second office and it has been fantastic. Um, we operate them more as two main offices um, and not really um, a, a main office and a satellite. So we are two days a week at each office. 
uh, and we rotate those days. So um, we, uh, like this week, were uh, Monday and Wednesday in the Augusta office and Tuesday and Thursday in the Evans office, and next week we will flip those. Uh, and so that just allows us to offer um, each day of the week to each office uh, population. And um, that has worked really well. We don't often have uh, staff members show up to the wrong location. It does happen, but usually if you can get to the right place on Monday, then uh, you can show up, uh, alternate from, from there on. So uh, a little bit about how the team's broken down. Uh, we have two uh, people at the front desk scheduling. Uh, I do have one financial slash insurance person and then a new patient coordinator. I'll talk a little bit about how that's different from our treatment coordinators. Um, that was a little bit of a new position to me. We, we've only had her for about a year, uh, and that has been a fantastic add. Um, I have six chairside assistants um, and then a records tech who also she handles our ordering. So Alicia, who is the records and ordering person, she's actually probably, I think, the longest uh, standing employee that I have. It's, it's between her and Laura, who's the uh, 3D lab tech down on the bottom right. Um, and um, Alicia was a chairside assistant, a fantastic chairside assistant. And um, as we added in the records position, she came to me and just said, you know what, I really like working with the new patients. Uh, she doesn't have the organizational skills to really be a treatment coordinator, nor did I need another treatment coordinator. Um, and she didn't really uh, have the organizational skills to be the new patient coordinator, but she was ready to kind of slow down from assisting. Uh, it was kind of taking a toll on her body. And so she was the perfect person to um, just move into taking pictures, taking scans, taking x-rays, and not the day-to-day -day grind of assisting. But she's fantastic to have in that because when I do have an assistant out, uh, she can flex into the assisting position for um, you know a day here and there when needed. So then the next question is, why do I have two lab technicians? So Linda on the left handles all of our appliances. She makes all of our retainers. She bends all of our uh, fixed retainers, she makes higher axes, she makes space maintainers, we do a lot of nances, a lot of lower lingual arches, she makes all of that in-house for us. Um, Laura on the right does all of our 3D lab work, so she does all of our 3D printing, she does all of our digital bracket removal, she um, submits all of our prescriptions, and um, she loads all of our indirect bonding brackets with composite, so she pastes all of those. Um, and coordinates the shipping and receiving of those. Um, so she has a big role in the practice as well. Um, so obviously uh, I like technology. So what technology do I like? Uh, everything starts and ends with tops. And, and so uh, I got my first Mac in dental school when I first started dental school and I haven't looked back. So uh, I only own one PC. Uh, and that is the um, laptop that I use to run ULab and Dibs for KLO. And uh, everything else in the practice is Mac. Um, and so because of that, um, I typically don't worry about showing up to work and wondering if everything's going to work. Um, and so that has been a very, very easy um piece of software to work. It is extremely reliable. It is extremely fast. And um, that has been fantastic to work with. Um, Gage has been really, really nice for our statistics for analyzing data. Uh, there is every statistic under the sun that you could possibly imagine in Gage, and you just uh, dream of what you want to know, and it is in Gage. Um, EasyRx, as I'll talk about later, is the heart of our digital workflow. And so, um, it is really the the um, mastermind behind everything that we do digitally, and um, we couldn't live without it. So we switched a, almost a year ago from Itero to Medit for our scanning, uh, and I was not sad to see the monthly fees of that Itero go. Um, that has been fantastic. One of the questions I get is, well, what was the switch like? The best comparison that I can give you is... Um, 
it was like switching from an iPhone to an Android. Um, now that's weird for a Mac user to say, uh, but the reason I give it that comparison is, you know, an iPhone is, is pretty user-friendly. It is plug and play. You open it up, you know what you're going to get. There aren't that many settings you can change. Um, and Android, you know, you can kind of play around and customize it and make it what you want and make it do a bunch of different things, some of which you don't really need it to do. And so once we got the Medit settings dialed in and tweaked and got it to do what we wanted it to do and only what we wanted it to do, um, the Medit was perfect. So the learning curve was a couple of weeks. For the first couple of weeks, my staff hated it. And um, now that we have, and I, the, the key is if you're going to make this switch, you have to put the Itero away, unplug it, don't let them see it and um, be done with it. Uh, now that we are past that first couple of weeks, uh, they can scan just as fast, just as accurately, just as well with the with the Medit as they could with an Itero. And uh, I think if I plug the Iteros back in, they wouldn't want to deal with the cart. Um, and so I'll show you our setup in just a few minutes. Uh, and so if I don't have Itero, then I don't have Invisalign, obviously. And so I use 3M Clarity Aligners and ULab Aligners. Um, so here's our treatment bay in our Evans office. So you notice we have um, two monitors at each station. Um, and then there is a uh, Mac in the uh, back of each dental unit. So each of these units is capable of scanning. So there is a scanner cord coiled up behind those monitors. And so all each assistant has to do is un uncoil the cord and plug in the scanner. So if you notice right under the keyboard, there's a little white stand behind that instrument tray. And that is the stand for the Medit scanner. And so um, all you have to do is go grab the scanner. I have three scanners. All you have to do is go grab a scanner, plug it in and open the software and go. Um, that has been extremely convenient, way better than rolling a cart around. Um, and that means when we travel between offices, I don't have two 50 pound Pelican cases. I have one tiny Pelican case that weighs a couple of pounds uh, and is about the size, is smaller than my briefcase. Uh, and so that has been a game changer. Nobody's throwing their back out, trying to load the car up to go between offices each day. Um, so we also use um, KL Owen custom braces. Um, and so that's Dibs AI, which is the software that drives the KL Owen um, digital custom braces. Um, I will talk a lot more about how this has changed our practice as well. We use EZRX. We use the EZRX for um, digital bracket removal. We use EZRX for trimming and basing models. We use EZRX for bracket or for um, prescription submission to um, KL Owen for prescription submission to 3M and prescription submission to ULAP. So the workflow is the same no matter what we're submitting for. Um, for 3D printing, um, I use hobby printers from Am Amazon. The printers are about $550 each. I have three of them. Uh, and there are a lot of people who think this is criminal. Um, we love it. The resin's cheap. Um, and um, if a printer goes bad, I throw it away and I order another one. Um, and so the, the flip side is you've got to be willing to tinker a little bit because there's no customer support uh, to call. There's no 1-800 number with cavalry there to help you out if something goes wrong. So if you're not a tinkerer, if you're not willing to try to join a Facebook group to figure something out, uh, or if you don't have a staff member, I have Laura who has really owned this. Uh, if you don't have that, this is not for you. Um, you need to spend, you know, 10 times what I spent and get a dental 3D printer. And that's okay. Um, this works for us. It doesn't work for everybody. Um, and then I have uh, in one office, in my Augusta office, because it's a more central location, I have a limited field cone beam. And uh, that's a plan mecca. Um, we use it as needed. So this is just how I was trained in my residency. We could still take a 2D pan and Ceph if there's an impaction, if there's a supernumerary that I want to take a look at. In this case, there was a transposition. Uh, then I investigate a little bit further. So it's not something that we do on every single patient. Um, so that's what we have in our office. So 
what I was asked to speak about tonight is um, how data-driven decisions have enhanced our outcomes, um, how we've simplified our scheduling, patient communication, billing, and then how we've streamlined lab prescriptions um, and our 3D technologies to increase our efficiency. So I've kind of broken down my, naturally, I've broken down my presentation into a few different sections. Uh, and I look at the data that we've used to revamp our new patient process and our treatment delivery uh, system. Um, I'm going to talk about what that new new patient process is and the integrated technologies that we've used to hopefully enhance our patient experience uh, and our in, increase our team efficiency. And then I'll talk about our digital workflow. So, why did I start analyzing data? What was the problem that we needed to address? So you noticed in the picture of our practice, my dad wasn't there anymore. Uh, so dad came to me um, in 2020. Uh, well, he came to me at the end of 2019 and said, it's time for me to retire. I've been doing this. Uh, been in an orthodontic since 1981. He was a general dentist before that for six years. So he'd been in dentistry for almost 50 years, and um, he said, it's time. I, you know, we've, I, I, he's, I think he would have retired earlier had I not come into practice. My, my coming into practice, he says, rejuvenated his, his love of orthodontics. And so he was, he was tired. He was ready to slow down. So in 2020, he went to three days a week. Oh, well, we all know what happened in 2020. We don't need to relive that. Um, and so... Then in 2021, he went two days a week, uh, all the while demand for orthodontics is moving in the opposite direction. So he's slowing down and demand for orthodontics is doing the opposite. 2022, he's totally retired. So I've got to find a way to get way more efficient without sacrificing quality, simply because I just, I never really wanted an associate. Um, I was also doing the first cohort of the Wharton AAO MBO. Uh, and, and so if you haven't done that, I, I highly recommend it. I, I thought it was great. Um, so some of the data that we looked at through Gage, um, you know, we had uh, in 2021, um, 254 future exams scheduled. You can see that number in Gage there. Um, and we're only seeing like, you know, at 60 to 70 new patients per month. Um, and that's, you know, moving in, we're, we're, the problem is increasing. Um, and so we're adding 100 and 130 new patients per month to top. So we're just not covering that gap. Um, so what do we have to do? So also through the AAO, the Wharton AAO MBO, uh, we saw this, what they call their flow and balance chart. Uh, and so the exercise they did is find your weight for your uh, new patient or what your demand is by looking for your third open new patient exam appointment. How many days is that? So that's that's your weight. That's your demand. What percentage of your consultations are booked? Uh, and um, that was over a month period of time. What's your conversion percentage? Uh, so that is simple. There are a lot of different ways you can figure out your, your conversion percentage. Fancy ones, this is simple. What's new starts divided by new patient exams? Uh, what is the wait in days for a full bonding appointment? So if somebody signs on the dotted line, when can they get their braces on? And then what, what, what percentage of your clinic is utilized? So we, extra, we, we went through some of this um, these case studies in the uh, cohort. And so this is the first one. So uh, 70 day wait for a, a new patient exam, 100% um, utilization for uh, their new patient exams are totally booked. They've got a 40% case acceptance rate and they can put braces on you tomorrow. And so their, uh, their clinic utilization is only 60%. So where should this practice focus their efforts? And, um, you know, obviously they need to work, they need some TC training. They need to work on their conversion percentage because 
they're they're chock full of new patients, but they're just not getting them to start. They can't get them to say yes. So this one is obviously also pretty obvious. You can call today and get in for a new patient exam. Only 70% of their new patient exams are booked and uh, they can put your braces on today. So, you know, they need some marketing. Um, pretty obvious. So the last case study, um, you have to wait 90 days to get in. They're 100% booked. Uh, conversion rate 60%, but you're waiting 35 days to get your braces on. So, you know, and the clinic is 100% booked. So who cares if the conversion rate goes up? They don't need TC training because it's just going to cause those the, the weight to put braces on and clinic utilization to be even more booked. So they got to get more efficient. Uh, they, they have to find a way to make their clinic utilization more efficient. So no surprise here. That's not a case study. That was us. Um, Along this, about the same time, I got put on the board at Augusta Country Club, and one of the members brought me this book, and he said, I want you to read this because I want you to, to learn about the concepts in this book, and I think it's going to help you be a better board member, whatever. Um, so I actually did read the book, and it actually was really good, and um one of the things that I really liked in it was the hedgehog concept. And um, Isaiah Berlin divided the world into hedgehogs and foxes. And it was based on an ancient Greek parable that said, um, the fox knows many things, but the hedgehog knows one big thing. And basically everybody, um, Jim Collins saw in the book that everybody who built good to great companies were basically hedgehogs they used a hedgehog nature to drive toward a hedgehog concept in their company so what is a hedgehog concept it's a simple crystalline concept that flowed from a deep understanding of the intersection of three circles and so those three circles were passion excellence and what drive what drove their economic engine well, the first two of those are the same for everybody in orthodontics. It's what you talk about when you get into your residency. And uh, it, you know, you want to help people. You want to create great smiles. Uh, it's everything. The passion is, is what you talk about at your residency interviews. Excellence. What can you be the best in the world at? Well, we hope it's orthodontics. It's straightening teeth. You want to be the best orthodontist. You want to be the best businessman would be the best best in the world at, at orthodontics so what drives your economic engine well so jim collins said this can actually be different in within an industry well good because if you've ever looked engaged there's about a thousand different statistics that you can look at so basically what he's saying is pick one of these pick one that you want to focus on and be the best that you can possibly be in that single statistic. And that kind of lined up with something my dad told me, which is that which you track tends to get better. So anyway, I picked revenue per appointment. The reason I like revenue per appointment is it measured treatment efficiency because you can't increase your fee high enough to really make a, a dent in revenue per appointment. And so the fastest way to increase your revenue per appointment is to decrease the number of appointments. Well, the only way to decrease your number of appointments is to get way more efficient in your treatment mechanics. And so this, um, this was kind of validated for me when I went to the Gage 360 Summit in February and Ryan, Ryan Moynihan spoke about value per visit. Well, value per visit is just another way of saying revenue per appointment. And um, so I actually asked him if I could borrow his slides on this because it was so good. And so the next few slides are from Ryan Moynihan at, at um, from Practice Tech. And um, so he talked about um, productivity plus efficiency equals profit. And so efficiency is... Um, the resources that you use to produce work. And so if you can get more output from the same input, 
without adding more resources, then you get more efficient. So for in orthodontics, if you can see more patients without adding more time or more staff, then obviously you're more efficient. Um, and so if you can treat patients more efficiently, then you're obviously more productive, which is more pro profitable. So how much, if we increase value per visit by dollar, how much does that increase our profit? We'll get back to that. Um, and so what over 150,000 completed cases engage, um, basically uh, it showed that longer treatment time equals more appointments, which equals a lower value per visit. So what's your target range for this? Your target value per visit should be $310. And uh, this is something that Gage can help calculate for you if you're a Gage user. So his point to this was not, you need to do this to maximize your value per visit. It was, you need to reevaluate your treatment modality to make sure that it suits you that it suits your patients, and that it's something that you can provide most efficiently and optimize your treatment modality to something that you enjoy doing, that you can do efficiently moving forward in the changing orthodontic market. And so what the numbers um, showed is that a dollar increase in value per visit, uh, the likely impact to that to profit is a four dollar and 65 cent increase in profit for every dollar that you add to value uh, per visit so um what did we do to try to increase our efficiency well it had to be multi-pronged so i added the stride by klo and digital custom bracket solution i had a grin remote monitoring for my aligner patients I called Mary Beth Kirkpatrick at Gage 360 Consulting and said, my schedule template needs help um, and I need to see more new patients. And then uh, she came in and said, yeah, yeah, and you need to streamline your new patient process in, in, while we're doing this. So this was not just a, a one-off a, a one solution. This was, we had to attack this from several different angles because I was trying to unring a bell that isn't supposed to be unrung. I was going from two doctors to one doctor. You're not supposed to do that in orthodontics and, and try to grow. So what's KL Owen? If you're not familiar with KL Owen, um, basically it's an aligner workflow, but for braces. So you take a scan. We all know how to take a scan. Um, then you get a digital setup back. Um, but it, a lot of people get hung up on this because they think they're going to spend their life behind a computer screen. It's not the case because this is not an aligner setup. Um, you don't have to worry about the middle. You look at the beginning and you look at the end and you have to worry about the end, but you don't have to worry about how are the teeth getting there. That's your job to figure out in, in the mouth. Uh, you do not have to worry about interferences and was that staged properly? And, you know, how are these 65 aligners staged? Um, so basically it's way faster to set up one of these cases than it is an aligner case. Um, and then once you hit approve uh, the case, once you've made your changes and hit approve, the case is approved. There's no back and forth with the lab. So um, to, then the computer software picks from a library of custom brackets and adds those to each tooth. So you also have a bracket box here, which can be used for loose brackets as needed. We tend to rebond the same bracket if we do have a loose bracket, but, um, and then you have indirect bonding. Uh, if you've bonded aligner attachments, you know how to do indirect bonding. So these are the um, 27, I believe, custom brackets that are offered. Um, and basically, it's a 100% custom solution. It's just modular instead of custom for each, every single bracket being different. 
um, but you still get 100% custom um, outcome. So they have low, medium, and high profile brackets and then different torques available. And um, so did it work? Yeah, so um, my recent debond since we have started, you know, we started this in uh, at the beginning of 2022. So we're starting to get, get to some debonds of non-extraction cases. Um, so obviously the sample size on non-extraction of like MBT cases um, was a good bit bigger. Um, but we've increased our revenue per appointment by $200. We have decreased our number of appointments by five, and we've actually shortened treatment time by a little bit. Um, so profitability wise, um, that is an increase of $930 in profitability. So for a $450 ish dollar lab fee, which includes the brackets. So you're already putting $200 worth of brackets on every case. So really it's a $250 increase to your, to your overhead. I got a $930 return on that. That was pretty good. Um, so were we able to be uh, more efficient? Yes. So we increased our capacity and all this data is from gauge, but in 20, from 2021 to 2022, remember we moved from two doctors to one doctor and, um, in losing a doctor, we really lost about a half a doctor because dad was working two days a week in 2021. Um, we still increased collections 9%. Uh, production per completed appointment was up 11%. Total starts were up 11%. Net production was up 16% or $450,000. And patients per doctor hour was up 50%. Um, Long-term goal would be for this to go down, but it had to go Go, it had to jump once since I lost a half a doctor. Um, and then in 2023, currently we're up 10% year over year from 2022. Uh, now the gauge data also shows that 2022 nationwide was very soft. So most practices were flat uh, or up or down only about one or 2%. Uh, and so we were obviously up about... Um, we were up significantly more than that. And so um, that is something that we could not have done without getting way more efficient. So what about breakage with indirect bonding? Uh, we don't track each individual broken bracket, but Gage does track the number of repair visits. So as of August of 23, uh, we are down 3% year over year on number of repair visits. So. Um, that was our analyzing data to um, make a couple of changes on the treatment delivery system. So then we also changed our uh, new patient process. And so I'm going to talk about how we streamlined some systems for uh, to make that process more efficient now. Um, so our old systems, probably a lot of you look similar to this. Um, and each one of these comes with a monthly tariff, mostly. mostly. Um, and so, and none of them really play nicely with each other. Uh, and so I kind of got tired of that. And it's like, there's got to be a better way. Something that that plays well with, it, with others, plays well with each other and integrates well. And so that's where um, TOPS and GAGE do that. And... Um, and then within each ecosystem, TOPS Reminders, TOPS Pay, um, Gauge Forms, Gauge Consult Manager, they all talk well with each other and they and can communicate and it minimizes the amount of data entry for the team. So the team is less busy with busy work and, easy, and more able to actually communicate with patients, follow up with pending patients. Uh, and so I'll show you how the new patient process has changed thanks to uh, these two softwares, and also thanks to Mary Beth uh, Kirkpatrick over at Gage 360 Consulting. And so here was our old new patient process. So new patient would call in, and if a treatment coordinator was available, then hopefully the treatment coordinator would be able to take that new patient call. 
So then the patient would be entered into TOPS. We would try to track those new patient calls in a Google spreadsheet. And the patient had to also be entered into Acceptix Pro. Then we would send the new patient forms via JOT form uh, and send them to the parent or the patient via rhinogram. Um, and um, we would have to follow up on those and constantly check to see if they've been sent in uh, and send text via rhinogram to remind them. And then hopefully by the time the new patient exam rolled around, they had completed them. And if not, they would complete them on an iPad here in the office. And then at the new patient exam, uh, we would get photos and a pan if needed. Uh, if they're ready for treatment, we present fees via Acceptix Pro. We'd get records, uh, which we would then finish a CEPH, a scan, and if needed, a comb beam. We had a separate visit for a consultation appointment, um, which was just an extra appointment to go through paperwork, uh, accept the contract, set up ortho bank, get the down payment. Uh, it was just an extra appointment is all it was to talk. Um, and then we would start. So it was a lot. Um, and it was a lot of moving parts and it was a lot of different pieces. And so what we did is we tried to streamline that with the help of Mary Beth, with the help of some streamlined software, this was our new patient process now. So we did add in a, a new position, the new patient coordinator, which I touched on earlier. So now the new patient coordinator handles all the phone calls. She um, also calls the dentist as soon as the patient calls and finds out, do we have a pan? What's the most recent profi date? Are there any pending dental needs, restorations that need to be completed? Um, and basically the new patient coordinator handles the new patient all the way up until the time that the patient walks through the door, uh, for their new patient exam. And it takes a lot of the load off of the treatment coordinators so that the treatment coordinators are left to handle the patient from the time they walk in the door until the time they start treatment, which means they are freed up to follow up, uh, on pending patients. So now with the new patient phone call, Patients are entered into TOPS and Gauge Consult Manager, and soon they will only need to be entered into TOPS, and then the data will pull into Gauge Consult Manager. So we're, we've gone from a lot of different places to add data. Soon it will only be one. Um, the, that is like Eureka. Uh, it is Nirvana for um, admin staff. Uh, for that new patient coordinator not to have to enter stuff in, in, in re-enter demographic information across lots of different platforms. Um, the treatment coordinator um, then picks up the patient at the new patient exam. We still take photos. Uh, the records tech will come in, take photos, take a pan, uh, and then we will present fees via Gage Consult Manager. So we're still in gauge. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention is, is as soon as that patient is entered in gauge consult manager, the new patient forms are, are fired via text and or email to the parent. The follow-ups to remind them to do those forms, complete those forms are automated. We can also track, which we could not do in jot form, we can track the progress of those forms. So we can open up those uh, in, in Gage forms and track, have they even opened the forms yet? When was the last time they opened them? How far have they gotten in those forms? So sometimes we get a patient who's come in and they say they've completed their forms, but we don't have them yet. We can actually open them up and say, oh my goodness, yes, you got all the way through them. You just forgot to hit submit. And we can actually complete the form for them and hit submit and, um, we don't have to say, oh, my goodness, why didn't you do your forms? Um, and so it's it's been a much more streamlined process. So um, then we're presenting fees through Gage Consult Manager. We're doing records the same day. We have eliminated that consultation appointment. And so now we're just doing the financial consultation. If they don't accept treatment the day of the new patient exam, um, we're just finalizing the Gage Consult Manager setting up tops pay and starting treatment all on the same day. We do require a down payment in order to order the um, KLO and or liners. Uh, so that's technically what, you know, some people like same day starts. Uh, that's a question I get a lot about. Um, 
you know, how do you handle same day starts with indirect bonding and, and KLO? And so I consider a same day start is if they put the down payment down and we order the braces, they're not going anywhere else. Um, I think we've maybe had that happen once in almost two years of doing this, that the patient calls back and says, you know what, I don't want that uh, anymore. Can you cancel that order? And that's fine. We give them their money back. We cancel the order. It's no big deal. It's probably a patient you didn't want in the first place. Uh, but you can see how much more streamlined this process is. The other major difference to point out here, too, is that um, the difference between Acceptix Pro or sorry, um, OrthoBank and TopsPay. So with OrthoBank, when a patient had a missed payment or if they made an additional payment or if they made a payment in the office, an online payment, um, we had to then submit a change request to OrthoBank and uh, adjust the OrthoBank payment plan. Um, with TOPS Pay, it's all done within TOPS. So if they make a payment in TOPS, the TOPS Pay plan is changed right there in TOPS. And so there's way less back and forth between us and a third party. It's all done right in within TOPS, way less administrative time for the financial team. So again, we have streamlined this process from start to finish. Uh, so it's freed up a lot of time for the administrative team. So Gage Consult Manager, I say it's one solution from call to close. It's just a funnel. It's a, a funnel for your new patient process. So it funnels all the new patients from their call through their pending phase, through observation, and all the way down until when they start. Um, it's one place where the treatment coordinators, the new patient coordinator, the financial coordinator, your insurance person, front desk, they can all know exactly where to look to see where the new patient is in the process. So the, uh, just to give you an idea of what this, the Gage Consult Manager screen looks like, you can add their insurance in here. You see when their next appointment is scheduled, uh, whether treatment was recommended, when they've started, whether their forms have come back yet. So the left side of this screen is the patient queue. That's where you'll search and find all of your patients and where they are in the process. The right side of the screen is an individual patient and what what their um, what status each of the um, each of the processes is in. So how how is that checklist progressing? Um, you can view their form status straight from Gage Consult Manager, and then um, the contract status is also viewable in Con Gage Consult Manager, and there is a tr uh, payment slider as well. I don't have a, a screenshot of that. So Gage Forms, you know, just like any other form system, uh, it comes with some um, prefab forms, but you can also, we've customized all of our own forms, and it was extremely easy. Um, and user friendly to do that. Uh, we're even doing a lot of our consent forms through that as well, not just the intake forms. And um, here's where you can tell whether the um, pay, where the forms have been sent back to you. So that was how we streamlined our um, new patient process. Uh, and a lot of the administrative processes to try to be able to see more new patient exams to clear that backlog. One of the other things that we have just started doing in August is grin new patient exams. Uh, so I'll let you know how that's going in the future um, to try to clear that backlog as well. Uh, trying to target some of our younger patients that we know who aren't ready. We don't do a ton of phase one in our practice. and um, so we're trying to see them virtually from home and we're selling it to them that, you know, you're likely not ready for treatment. And so we want you to not have to miss school, mom and dad not to have to miss work. And, um, you know, we already have a pan from your dentist. Uh, or if we don't, then, you know, it's a whole lot easier for us to take a look. And if we need a pan, we can get you scheduled for a very quick appointment to take an x-ray. Uh, and then we can review that information. And if you do need treatment, then we'll get you in for records, which is a lot easier to schedule than a new patient exam. And so far, that's been going great, and it's very been very well received. 
Uh, we just don't have enough data on that to really show how much of an impact it's making yet. So um, what is our 3D workflow look like? So uh, let's talk about the last prong of this, uh, our last leg of this stool. Um, and so the digital process uh, in an orthodontic practice, it's all centered around the, the intraoral scanner. For us, that's the medit. For you, it may be something else. Uh, but anyway, the scanner is the center of this process. From Out from that flows records flows um, aligners. That was the next logical step from us. Once we got a scanner, we started with records. Then we went to um, aligners. Aviz originally, it was uh, Invisalign with, with an Itero. Now it's 3M and ULab with a Medit. Next came retainers for us uh, and 3D printing. And finally, uh, um, KL Owen and a fully digital indirect, uh, fully digital custom indirect bonding solution. But how do you keep track of it all? Um, and how does something not get lost in the shuffle? So there has to be a middleman for all of that. And so for us, the middleman or the brains behind all of it and what keeps it all driving and straight and organized uh, is EasyRx. And so EasyRx sits in the middle of everything except records. Um, and so really we couldn't live our life in in the 3d world without easy rx and so we use easy rx to submit prescriptions we use easy rx to track those prescriptions we use easy rx to remove brackets to trim models to base models and get them ready for 3d printing so it is the hub of our um 3d workflow so what does that workflow look like? Well, the nice thing is that it is the same for aligners or for braces, and it's the same no matter which aligner company we're submitting it to. So we scan, um, and that scan, we then submit the prescription to via EZRX, and the scan is actually automatically attached to that prescription, which is nice. And it, that's whether it was Medit or when we had Itero. And your scanner brand is probably also attached via EZRX automatically. That, that prescription is then submitted to um, the lab that it needs to be submitted to. Um, then that lab sends back the um, digital setup for me to approve, uh, whether that's brackets or aligners, I approve that plan. And um, then we wait to receive the case back to deliver to the patient. So it's pretty standard workflow. Uh, there's nothing special about it, except that it's streamlined because of EZRX and it's organized because of EZRX. So what does it look like to upload a case into EZRX? So full disclosure, I don't normally do this. I did this to record the screen and I messed it up and I'll show you where I messed it up. But this is exporting the patient's images from TOPS to upload them into EZRX. Because TOPS and EZRX work nicely together, I'll show you a really nice integration so that there's no demographic. So we're going into off the charts and um, off the charts will automatically log me into EZRX. Normally my 3D lab tech is doing this and that's why I screwed it up. So off the charts or EZRX says, hey, there's a person with this demographic information already in EZRX. Would you like to connect them? So we did. Uh, and so now I'm going to upload those pictures. That's because we had already printed some models on Ethan. Um, and so um, now we had pictures and x-rays from separate visits on Ethan. So we're going to upload those easily. Uh, he had come out of a carrier. He didn't fix his class two. One of the few that we have, he just He's got no pain tolerance and wouldn't wear his elastics. I know y'all don't have any patients like that, but occasionally it happens. Um, so then we create the prescription and select what lab. So we're going to select Kalo and he's going into braces. We're going to put in uh, what his appointment date is and then what date we need it back, which we just always put one day before the appointment date and we haven't had a problem. I don't see the need for an appointment time because I just need it the day before. I'm the doctor. We always ship to our um, Augusta office, but he's his appointment is in the Evans office. 
So I'm now creating that prescription. It's attaching those records that we just uploaded. At this point, I should have said, use a medit scan and look up an insert medit case, and it would have automatically attached the models to that case. But I didn't. I screwed it up. Um, and so then at that point, my digital lab technician emails me and says, would you please approve that lab prescription? And so I go in and I say, this is going to be indirect bonding. I want upper and lower seven to seven. If I need to put any notes in, I can right there in that additional notes box. Um, and so at this point, I did not hit submit sign and submit because I realized at this point that the models were not attached. Um, and so that was my fault. But anyway, it takes about 10 more seconds to attach those models. So I apologize for messing that up for you for this video. Um, so that is how easy it is to submit a prescription to any lab that you want. It doesn't have to be KL Owen um, through EasyRx. Um, and that's why our workflow is um, so streamlined at this point. So last thing I'll talk about is our retainer workflow, and then I'll wrap it up. So it's very similar. The only difference is we scan and then our digital lab tech removes the brackets, uh, trims the model, puts a base on it. Again, all in EZRX. Exports those models for 3D printing. So she loads them onto the software that came with the 3D printers. Once we print those models um, and they're ready to go, uh, my regular lab tech then bends a lower three to three retainer typically for our standard retention protocol. This, she will also block out um, a second model um, and we'll make upper and lower Essex. So she's just using stone to block out uh, where the bonded retainer will go so that we can bond the retainer and uh, insert upper and lower Essex, all at the debond appointment. So again, very efficient. Um, here is a shot of bracket removal in EZRX. You probably have seen it. If not, uh, it is extremely easy. It just takes a couple of seconds. And um, so in conclusion, data should drive decisions that you make in your practice. Uh, you should get as efficient as you can because you can use the time for a lot of different things. More time with your family, time to serve the community, time to do whatever you want, time to go take a trip, do what you want to do. Um, and harness 3D technology to, to help you do that. Uh, it's 2023 and I don't think digital custom anything is going away. So embrace it. Don't be afraid of it. It's easy to implement. Uh, and there are technologies out there like EZRX and uh, to help you do that. So the last thing I'm going to leave you with is we've all heard about the digital employee. And I think a lot of people think it's garbage. I wasn't so sure about it myself. And I honestly didn't care. That's not why I did this. Um, but, you know, I've been at this almost two years with KLO and all in on digital everything, um, streamlining so software. And so in May, right before the summer rush, Kendall came to me and said, you know, I live an hour away. I'm spending all my money on all my paycheck on gas money. And my old boss, who was a general dentist, um, called and offered me my old job back. He really needs me. He didn't know I was working here. He thought I was still working at the bank, which is where she worked before uh, I hired her. And I really feel like I need to take that job. And I said, look, I get it. You know, I mean, gas is expensive. You probably ought to take that job. So she left right before our summer rush and I have not replaced her. And we've been totally fine. Um, we even had a week in the summer where Lindsay, the short one on my left, opposite Kendall, um, was out sick for a whole week. And again, we were fine. Now, would I want two out for a week? No, I don't even want two out for a day. But losing Kindle is a $40,000 impact to the bottom line of the practice. You lose a salary and payroll taxes and, you know, 401k and all of that. That's a big impact, probably more than $40,000 impact to the practice. Um, and so uh, I actually now kind of believe in the digital employee, whereas before I thought it might be a, uh, a bunch of garbage. And um, so 
with that, um, I'll open it up to questions. Uh, this is me. This is how I spend my uh, time, my free time. Uh, that's Jackson is an avid golfer and very competitive. Uh, people often ask me when he's going to be better than me. Uh, I played college golf and my answer is he already is. So about three, uh, first week of August, uh, we spend in Pinehurst every year at the U S kids golf world championships. And so last year he finished tied for ninth in his age group in the world. This year he wasn't quite as happy with his finish. He was, uh, like tied 33rd, but, uh, he has a very loving sister who's willing to put up with it and, um, and go follow him and cheer him on. And so um, that's where we spend a lot of our free time is on the golf course together. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Thank you again for your time and I uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Dr. Trotter. There are some questions coming in, but before I get Great. to those, I would like to uh, invite viewers to use the question and answer feature in the control panel on your screen to ask any questions. First question, are there any considerations to keep in mind when integrating multiple software solutions into an existing orthodontic practice? So I think cost, uh, particularly with multiple, uh, cost is obviously, it has to be a consideration. Um, and I think the other is, do they talk to each other? Uh, so, you know, one of the things that I found when you when you looked at the first slide of what our technologies were, um, many of those things were disjointed and didn't talk to each other and kind of piecemeal. And so can you get the same or similar solutions all, all under one umbrella versus kind of piecemealing it together from different companies? Um, and I think streamlining it is um, and. and and getting it all from one solution is always going to be more efficient um, than trying to piecemeal it together from a lot of different companies. And it's probably going to be less expensive too. And, and can you review some of the improvements you've personally experienced in your practice since implementing these tools? Yeah, you know, uh, we're able to see more patients um, uh, with, and I go home way less tired. So, you know, prior to this, we'd see 50 or 60 patients in a day and I was wiped out. Uh, now we probably see 70 or 80 uh, and I would go home and I'm, you know, I still have energy left. Um, we are, we've seen an increase in production and increase in collections all while going from one and one and a half doctors to one. Uh, um, I, my staff has more time to follow up with patients uh, because they're less busy with busy work. Um, and, you know, I think the patient experience is better. Um, we've seen, uh, since going to TOPS Reminders, we've seen fewer failed appointments. So one of the things TOPS Reminders has is an, uh, the ability to text the patient an hour before the appointment. And uh, we've gotten a lot of compliments on that. Uh, a lot of parents going, man, that hour before reminder is great because so many times they get into their day and they knew they had an appointment and they go, golly, I just missed my appointment. And that hour before reminder has really cut down on missed appointments. Uh, I think we're down uh, like five or 6% on, on missed appointments uh, year over year. Okay, uh, third question, what key performance indicator would you say is the most important to watch? So I love revenue per appointment, um, but uh, I think, as my dad said, whatever you tend to track tends to improve. Uh, I love that advice, and I, I, I think about it every day. And um, so I think what's, and as uh, Jim Collins said in Good to Great, what my hedgehog concept is, is not necessarily what your hedgehog concept will be. So I love revenue per appointment, but for somebody else, they may love track in production or collections or uh, patients per doctor hour. Um, there are dozens and dozens of great statistics engaged that you can track, but don't try to track them all. Um, pick one that, that fits your practice. Uh, and like I said, for me, that's revenue per appointment but it doesn't have to be that for everybody, but pick one and really hone in on it and your practice will get better. 
What is the one tool you think every orthodontist should have? Right now, I think the one tool everybody should have by now is a 3D scanner. If you don't have an intraoral scanner by now, I think you're you're well behind the times. Uh, and then uh, once you have an intraoral scanner, at that point, I think you need to start getting into 3D printing. Um, I'm glad I did years and years ago. I think we got into it in 2018. Uh, and so that's what, five years ago now. Uh, and I'll, you know, I think it's time to, to embrace that. Okay. And what is the biggest time saver for your office? Definitely the digital indirect bonding. Um, it's my biggest time saver because I don't, I, now I don't have to be the one to put braces on and get them in exactly the right position. I know that the, the team can do that. And I know they're going to be in the right position. So that frees me up um, to do other things while there are full bondings going on. But it also decreases the number of appointments. It decreases the number of wire bins because it's basically a straight wire appliance. So it decreases not only the number of appointments, but my chair time at each patient's appointment. And so the team is not waiting on me from appointment to appointment uh, at, at uh, each patient's visit. So it it's the gift that keeps on giving, I guess, as far as uh, my time. So definitely um, KLO and custom brackets. Um, how how does your staff uh, utilize the tools that you showed us? Um, you know, in addition to what you've already showed us, are there other ways? So uh, with tops reminders you can also text patients two-way texting in that. Uh, so that has been very helpful. Tops pay, uh, you know, we replace, uh, we've replaced not only our auto pay plans, but you can do one-time payments in that. So um, that has replaced uh, our merchant services. Um, so what else do we, gauge forms. We use gauge forms for not just patient intake forms, but we use it for consent forms. So, uh, you know, if we have a laser consent, if we have, you know, a supplemental consent for like an impacted canine, for perio, for a uh, strange treatment plan, we can send that out to the patient or the parent um, at home and they can e-sign that from home. So we have really adapted gauge forms uh, to what we need it to be. Uh, and so it's, uh, that has been really adaptable. Uh, and so we've we've really tried to put these technologies to work to fit our practice uh, and really cut ties with a lot of the other solutions that we were paying monthly or yearly fees for. Uh, how has implementing these softwares changed the flow of your practice? Well, we've cut down on... Um, unnecessary or frivolous appointments uh, like that consultation appointment that was just totally unnecessary. Um, and um, so I hope the patient flow of it is better. Um, and I hope the patient experience is better because they're coming fewer times. So what we tell, what we tell patients is, uh, you know, we can see you in fewer visits, which is less missed time for school, less missed time from work, and, uh, you know, less times that they have to fight over whether they get a morning or an afternoon appointment. Uh, and so overall, the experience is better for them, which is a win-win. And that's what they can go tell their friends and families, friends and family about. You know, last question, how has your practice efficiency improved um, in other ways by utilizing these softwares? So um, efficiency-wise, you know, not having paper for like lab prescriptions um, cuts down on losing it. Uh, and so that is, that's way more efficient. Uh, you know, the, the digital workflow, keeping it digital and, and flowing that all through EZRX uh, has really helped to streamline uh, that from an efficiency standpoint and um, make sure that nothing falls through the cracks. So everything's in EZRX, everything's organized. Laura, my 3D lab tech is on top of the schedule and EZRX and making sure that everything is tracked as far as 
prescriptions that need to be submitted um, and prescriptions that need or, or lab cases that need to be re returned, um, models that need to be trimmed, brackets that need to be removed. So everything is in one place and um, nothing falls through the cracks that way. And so with paper, all bets are off. And so that has really streamlined it and made it in, uh, way more user-friendly and efficient. Well, thank you everybody for your questions, but we've run out of time today. And if we did not get to your question, we'll answer it after the webinar via email. Uh, thank you all again for attending. A special thank you to Dr. Paul Trotter for your great presentation and our sponsor for the webinar, Tops. Thank you and be well. Thanks for having me.